All right, I'm getting back into World of Warcraft here shortly before Dragonflight comes out. And we're starting to make videos again. And specifically, we're going to be talking today about the Arcane Mage. Um, so we're going to look at sort of the current state of the Arcane Mage spec and... <clears throat> uh like strengths and weaknesses of it um now i haven't looked i know they're changing the whole talent system stuff around for dragonflight uh so i don't know exactly what's different so far i'm not in the dragonflight beta but the pre-patch for dragonflight is supposed to be coming out soon so uh, we will see, once that comes out, how the, how the class plays, and we'll be able to compare and see if the class has the same problem still, or I should say the spec, not the class, uh, or if they've fixed problems with the class, and stuff like that. Um, uh, so... Here's the stuff we're going to talk about, the purpose of this video, which I just talked about basically, sort of the my background of this video, uh, and then we'll look at the Arcane Mage's uh, single target, like DPS rotation, AoE rotation, other spells, uh, talents, borrowed power, like the Covenant crap, and the Soulbinds, and the Conduits, and the Legendaries, and... We're gonna do a dungeon. Uh, we're just gonna queue for a uh, dungeon because I'm not gonna. I'm too lazy to like edit, like record a separate video and edit them together and stuff. So, yeah. <clears throat> so the background for this video, uh, Arcane Mage was the spec I played most in uh for battle for azeroth uh eps specs i think i played my uh my resto shaman more uh but for dps specs arcane mage was the most played thing that i played back then uh but i haven't played very much of shadowlands so, uh, I've done Heroic Dungeons and a couple Mythic Zero Dungeons, um, so it plays pretty much the same, uh, uh, but yeah, because I've played this DPS spec, uh, the most, that's why we're gonna be, that's why I'm making a video about this first and then I'm probably going to make a couple more videos for other specs that I've been playing a lot <clears throat> cuz uh I play all the classes as you can see uh but some I definitely play a lot more than others uh so yeah <clears throat> let's look at first the uh Single target damage rotation of our arcane mage. So the training dummies are over here. Um, so we start off with we have arcane blast, and what I really hate about arcane blast is that when you have no arcane charges. Not only is the damage bad, but it takes a full two seconds to cast something that only does, uh, uh, like 1k damage. Well, we gotta crit that second time. Uh, whereas, uh, you look at Arcane Explosion, which we can spam, that initially does more damage than a 
than a uh, zero uh, a zero charges uh, arcane uh, blast. So I feel like uh, specifically that's like too punishing. It's just basically if you don't have at least two charges, it's not really worth casting arcane blast. But you have to build charges. So you have a couple ways you can do that is well you can build charges with the instant cast arcane explosion, of course. Um or touch of the magi will give you four arcane charges. It's on a 45 second cooldown. Uh, but most of the time you're going to be playing at maximum arcane charges for single target stuff. So you only really need to do that once and then oh, uh, for single target you, you pretty much don't use arcane barrage until you get to the point where you're running out of mana. Um, or the other thing you can do to get charges is the uh, Presence of Mind uh, thing, which makes your Arcane Blast instant cast. So you, do, you, you press that button and then you have three charges of instant cast Arcane Blast to get yourself started. So, I guess I didn't actually show a touch of the man shot, but you just... Do that once, and then you're at max charges. So, uh, so for single target damage, just spamming arcane blast is great. But there's also this clear cast mechanic where, uh, whenever you spend mana, you have a chance of getting this clear cast thing, and that gives you. Um, a free cast, like a zero mana cost of uh, either arcane explosion or arcane missiles. Um, so uh, let's get that up again. So arcane explosion, it's just free. Arcane missiles, it's free, but you also get another missile out of it. Or if you have this talent here, you get a total of three extra missiles out of it. So, Arcane Missiles is normally uh, five missiles. But with uh, clear casting. Uh, it'll be six unless you have this talent, in which case it's eight. And then the clear casting also increases the cast speed of arcane missiles. Uh, so instead of a 2.2 second uh, channel, it becomes like uh, like 1.8 or something. Uh, the tooltip doesn't tell you, and I don't care enough to actually get the exact calculation for you but but basically uh particularly when you're using this talent uh your highest dps is when you're casting these uh clear cast arcane missiles uh but when you don't have arcane charges the uh the dps uh well, when you don't have arcane charges, let me get rid of my arcane charges, get rid of the clear casting. Uh, yeah, so when you don't have arcane charges, your arcane missiles <coughs> uh, definitely do better DPS. Wait, when did I get this charge? Your arcane missiles definitely do better... Uh, DPS than the first couple casts of Arcane Blast. Uh, you saw that second one was like 2,000 damage. Uh, but I th 
it's either when you get to the the third or the fourth charge, then uh, then uh, arcane blast starts doing uh, better DPS than arcane missiles. Uh, but arcane missiles is pretty mana expensive. So, yeah. Outside of clear casting, you don't use it too much. Mostly if you, like, use your arcane barrage and then there's an enemy that's got low health left and it takes too long to do arcane blast. You can use fire blast sometimes to kill it, uh, but other times... Uh, if it's got a little more health, you might need to use arcane missiles. Fire blast is much better mana cost though. It's 500 compared to 7,500. So if you can finish off enemies with a fire blast, uh, that's preferable. Uh, so yeah, so for single target rotation, that's kind of the basics is you get your things up uh, when you see your clear casting thing then you uh, use arcane missiles and then you go back to spamming arcane blasts and then you see another clear cast you do the arcane missiles we get it again arcane missiles again um, but for you can see that we are running out of mana pretty quick uh, I was just looking at it earlier you usually doing this you run out of mana after like 30 seconds um, so definitely not ideal uh, because boss fights especially when you're doing mythic plus it's a tyrannical uh, tyrannical boss, then your your boss fights tend to last uh, longer. I don't remember exactly how long, like two or three minutes. So, what we have for when we run out of mana. Sorry, my mana's come back up, so let me get rid of it again. So what we have is this great spell, Evocation, which uh, channel and your mana comes up and it's great. Uh, but that's a one and a half minute cooldown. So, uh, so basically you get another full mana bar and then, you know, like, we should really use these up. Uh, since the clearcast arcane missiles are free, you definitely want to use those. The, they make your mana last longer, essentially. Um, but yeah, again, we're out of mana after like 30 seconds. So, um,. So basically, we have like a minute total of uh, IDPS from that. Now, you also have Arcane Power. I'm using the talent here that uh, gives you extra damage and more reduced mana costs. 50%. Uh, uh, without that, it's 30% uh, by default. So... If you're doing a boss fight, uh, and you, if you use that during the boss fight, then, uh, well, you'll, you'll want to start off their boss fight usually with Touch of the Magi to get all your arcane charges up, and then we'll do that, and then we'll do this, and then our mana goes down slower during this because of the uh, reduced mana costs, which is pretty cool. There's kind of, uh, well, let me finish doing this here. Let's see how long it goes. All right. 
So we got like maybe 10 extra seconds or so out of uh, out of that. So since it gives you extra damage, you might use your clear cast arcane missiles during it to maximize your DPS. But because clear cast arcane missiles are free, you don't get the benefit of the 50% less mana costs from it. Uh, so you may or may not use your clear cast arcane missiles during it. It's kind of up to you. Uh, but uh, let me talk about one other thing with the uh, clear cast, uh, which is that the icon here for clear casting is it doesn't change and the tooltip doesn't tell you uh, but you can actually get as far as I know it goes up to three stacks of clear casting so if I evocate right now and spam some more it'll uh yeah so it reset the the cooldown on it but it's still three stacks of clear casting so the the indicator doesn't really tell you that um but there's uh it's good to know because sometimes you want to save up your clear casts uh so that you can just cast them all at once uh at a certain point in the battle or like I said you could uh, you could uh, like save them up and then do them during your arcane power uh, for like a really big burst of damage so it's uh so yeah it's cool but then when you run out of mana and then, uh, and your evocation, uh, isn't back up yet. That's when you have to start using Arcane Barrage to, uh, to get... Arcane Barrage both gives you back mana and uses up your charges. So, it's, uh... You kind of get into this pattern of uh, you'll use a few casts, get your charges up, and then Arcane Barrage, reset them. But just those initial couple casts of Arcane Blast with zero charges are just so painfully slow that... Uh, I really try to avoid that at, if at all possible. Though specifically for the Shadowlands Covenant, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's a way to see the other Covenant powers right now. But uh, the one I chose is the, the Venthyr because it gives you this thing which it's on a one and a half minute cooldown. It does some damage, basically. Uh, but it basically gives you three free clear casts. Uh, assuming the enemy, like, triggers them properly. So the, the training dummy isn't going to trigger them. But three free clear casts is... Uh, extra damage of course but also because they're uh they're clear cast they don't cost any mana uh, so that uh, that also slows down you running out of mana so it's i really like this covenant ability us uh, because of that uh i know there's uh, other covenant abilities that are Probably more popular. There's one I've seen where the, the mage does a bunch of like AOE around them. Uh, they just stand there channeling this thing. Um, 
I don't know what the other ones are. I forget. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I chose this covenant ability specifically to get better, uh, uh, single target damage longevity, I guess you could say. Um, and because of that also, for a single target damage, I would say the far, by far best stat for secondary stats is mastery. Uh, because it gives you maximum mana and mana regeneration and damage. Uh, so just the damage would be uh, decent, but with the maximum mana and mana regeneration uh, for uh, for those long single target DPS fights, I think it's definitely the best. Uh, now on the opposite side of that, haste is definitely the worst uh, because you run out of mana so fast and uh, that also means by extension that time warp and uh, bloodlust and all the, the other ones uh, for arcane mage are by far the, uh, the worst so if we do some single target damage stuff again here and we do a time warp. And you can see our mana disappears very, very quickly. So, yeah, we ran out of mana in like 20 seconds instead of 30 seconds. We were also a little bit unlucky as far as the clear casting goes. But... Uh, but yeah, because of that, haste is terrible, uh, which is why I'm, I've been unlucky getting the trinkets I want, so this trinket is kind of bad. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, mastery is great. Haste is really bad. I'd really like to see them make haste better better um for example if they made haste give the arcane mage mana regeneration i think that would help a lot i don't think it makes sense to give the maximum mana to haste but i think mana regeneration could go on haste or maybe they could do some other thing where like haste reduces mana costs or something also something something could definitely be done to make haste not such a bad stat for the arcane mage uh crit and versatility are both all right but like i said i definitely prior prioritize mastery uh over everything else um uh, for for pure damage crits probably better uh, since versatility also gives you uh, incoming damage reduction but uh, yeah just kind of it's kind of the way it goes for what gear you find where I'm prioritizing mastery I'd take crit over versatility if I had an option but Usually you don't, you don't really get that much of an option, so that's the way it goes. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's about it for single target damage stuff. Uh, I am using the Rune of Power currently. Uh, if I'm feeling lazy, I go with Encanter's Flow, which is just like a kind of a passive damage increase um but rune of power is probably better 
I think it's actually... If you're really just trying to maximize your damage... Uh, in a dungeon, for like the damage meters... It's really not the single target damage that you want to worry the most about, it's the AoE damage. Because single target damage... Uh, you'll do some amount, like 5k maybe, but... For AoE damage, which is what we're talking about next, uh, you're going to be doing more like 10k DPS. Um, you'll basically like twice as much AoE damage as single target damage. Uh, which means that if you're using stuff like Rune of Power and Arcane Power on the AoE parts, then the total amount of damage that you do in the dungeon will be higher. So, something to think about if just the damage meter is what you're worried about. Uh, but let's look at AoE damage rotation. So, there's a couple extra options, but the simple, the simple premise of it is... If there's at least three targets, you're going to spam Arcane Explosion until you have four Arcane Charges, and then you press your Arcane Barrage skill, and you go again. So, that's all there is to it. Um, so, three targets is fine more targets more damage now you will get clear cast during your uh, arcane explosion spam and your next arcane explosion will immediately Use it up. Getting kind of unlucky here. I'm trying to show a clear cast thing. It's not popping up. All right. So uh, we could use arcane missiles at this point instead of arcane explosion, because arcane explosion will do uh, on three targets. It does like 4,500 damage with my current gear and whatnot. Whereas Arcane Missiles, uh, we just did 12k damage. So, you can... Now, of course, that's like a, a longer channel than an instant cast Arcane Explosion. So, as far as pure DPS goes, it's not that much of... Not, it's not as much of a difference, but... Specifically for three targets. Um, the the arcane missiles will be higher DPS um, than an arcane uh, explosion. Uh, when you get to five targets here, we are doing. How much with an arc screen is frozen? Five. We're doing maybe like 8,000 damage or so per arcane explosion. Um, so when you compare that to the uh, the arcane missiles clear cast, uh, that's with the full eight uh, missiles. The, uh, the, they're, they're, all, they're pretty much even, uh, as far as what's better. Now, you do need to keep in mind that the, uh, Arcane Missile's clear cast, um, does not generate arcane charges. So, if we use it here, 
we're still at two arcane charges. Which means that we are farther away from our next arcane barrage than if we kept using arcane explosion. Um, and when you're doing this, you're spamming arcane explosions and I really need to reset this. All right, so when we're doing this, if we're just purely spamming arcane explosions and arcane barrages, uh, they come out relatively not too far different on the damage meters. Uh, this is with five targets. Uh, Uh, so it's definitely more on arcane explosion damage. If we go down to three targets, I think it's a bit closer. Uh, we got some crits there. It's obviously we're 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 doing small sample size here. Um, Uh, but basically, yeah, you're, you'll have more arcane explosion damage, but per cast, uh, your arcane barrage does a lot more damage because we're casting, uh, yeah, we're casting four arcane explosions here per arcane barrage uh, cast so it's really nice to uh, to to get as many arcane barrages as we can basically so that's why uh, while you can while you can use your arcane missiles um you you might still want to use arcane explosion anyways um let's see yeah for aoe that's basically it now there's some talents related to that um there's rule of threes well i'll talk about rule of threes later What's more important probably is, uh, first of all, I like this one. Shoot. Okay, let, let's first talk about this other one. We'll talk about Touch of the Magi. So Touch of the Magi, you cast it on the enemy, it gives you the uh, freaking... Uh, uh, or arcane charges uh, and then any single target damage you do to that target uh, it like stores it up and then it does an explosion well it damages the target but it does an explosion at the end of touch of the magi to do AoE damage as a percentage of the single target damage you did to that uh, well, AoE damage is included also, but a, a percentage of the damage you did to your target gets uh, added in there. So, I th I'm not actually sure. You can probably use, like, damage dealing trinkets specifically to add extra damage in here. The damage dealing trinkets will do like uh, ten to fifteen thousand if you use one of those uh, specific on use kind of ones uh, with like a two minute cooldown. So those will give you a bunch of extra damage for single target, um, and then that's also a reason to uh, do 
the clear cast arcane missiles. So let me bring up some clear casting stacks here. All right, so we got three clear casting stacks. So if we do our cane, uh, sorry, touch of the magi, and then spam our clear cast arcane missiles here, and we can get one more arcane blast in there. Then, uh, then our touch of the magi did some decent amount of damage out of that. Uh, only two thousand apparently. So, that's uh, from spreading to four targets. Let's just look at the combat log, I guess. Uh, so, it, it did three and a half thousand uh, per target, and one of them crit for uh, 7,900. Yeah. I'm, no, it wasn't a crit. How did that happen? Accumulating. Oh, my bad. So 25% of the damage. All right, it's reduced damage to other targets. So 7,900 was the, the target I cast it on. And then 3,500 for all the other targets. So it's, uh, It's AoE damage, obviously, but not really that good. Like, we just spam our King Blast into it. Let's see what we get. So we got 5,000 on the main target and another roughly 10,000. Out of the other targets so we got like 15,000 total damage on that plus uh our arcane blast did uh a bunch of damage but that was this thing is up for a total of eight seconds so that was eight seconds of us casting stuff whereas if we just spam arcane explosions and arcane barrages, we will definitely do comparable damage. So, I really don't like the touch of the magi thing at all. Um, it's very similar to the fire mage current mechanic of where you do a bunch of single target damage and then you spread the ignite damage. I really think that mechanic is also garbage. People have really min-maxed it for Mythic Plus stuff. Uh, so last I checked, Fire Mage was still a popular choice because you can really, really, with the right gear, get massive ignite damage and spread it to other targets. Um, but for... Just as far as the the gameplay feel of it, I think it feels really dumb. I don't like how it's like duplicating the damage uh, and copying it over to the other targets. If they wanted to like spread the damage, I feel like that would be that would kind of like make more sense, I guess. But, anyways, yeah, that's the main things for the AoE rotation. Um, I like to generally, like I said, use the Arcane Barrage one for more damage for more targets. That's great. And also, I like the one where if Arcane Explosion hits at least three targets, uh, there's a 50% chance to get an extra Arcane Charge. So that means, uh, basically you get to the Arcane Barrage cast more frequently, which is great. So best case scenario, uh, 
two arcane explosions. Uh, and worst case scenario, four arcane explosions uh, before your arcane barrage. Uh, so arcane orb. Arcane orb is also usable. Uh, do I have that on my bar? I don't think I do. Uh, all right. So arcane orb is cool. Uh, it'll give you your charges if it hits multiple enemies. Um, and it's on a 20 second cooldown. I think it was on a longer cooldown in L for Azeroth. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned already. Uh, Touch of the Magi was a talent in battle for Azer Azeroth, which I never took, but they made it like baseline now. But I still don't really like it. I only really use it for a single target just to get my initial uh, arcane charges up. Uh, but yeah, Arcane Orb is pretty good. It does, uh, it does like two and a half Arcane Explosions worth of damage. Uh, maybe two Arcane Explosions worth of damage. So it's, uh, it's a decent burst of damage. Um... And, of course, it also gives you the charges so that you can cast an Arcane Barrage right away. Uh, but what I don't like about it is the uh, the 40-yard range for, for dungeons. Uh, you got to be careful to not uh, shoot it in a way that's going to hit another group of enemies that's farther away. Uh, it's pretty far. So, certain dungeons that that can definitely be a problem. Uh, so, yeah, I tend to not use it. I just use the uh, reverberate. Keep it simple. Um, yeah. So that's basically it for our AoE rotation stuff. Let's look at the Arcane Mage's other spells. Uh, I mentioned already, Time Warp is trash, basically. Since you're limited uh, essentially by your mana regen, right? For, for uh, those longer battles. Basically, any boss fight where people are using Time Warp, it does you no good because you're going to run out of mana either way. Um, so, yeah. That's that's really the, the haste. The problem with the haste, though. It's not really a problem with time warp unless they could do, like, they could give arcane mages, like, a passive where, like, during time warp... And other similar effects, you get a hundred percent increased mana regeneration, or something, something like that. They could do something like that, but I'd really rather they just make haste not a terrible stat for the arcane mage. Uh, let's see what other spells we got. Uh, we've got frostbolt. Uh, I'm not terribly sure why I have this on my bar even so obviously it does a little bit of damage and it slows enemies for eight seconds but you have the slow ability which slows enemies for 15 seconds and it slows them for more so so, I literally never cast Frostbolt. Um, now, Fire Blast, like I said, 
because it's such a low mana cost and it's instant cast, uh, you can definitely use it to finish an enemy off. Um, so that one is definitely usable. Uh, Prismatic Barrier is, of course, fine. Um, uh, just damage absorption. Uh, Presence of Mind, your next three Arcane Blasts are instant. Like I said earlier, you can use that when you have no Arcane Charges. Uh, so that you're not waiting on a two second freaking Arcane Blast. Um, uh, or you can also just save it for a part of the fight where you need to be moving so that you can cast a few arcane blasts while you're moving. Uh, that's another thing you might save your uh, clear casting for, though, is you might wait for a part where you need to move and then you use your clear casts while you're running. So, just a way you can keep your damage up at parts in the fight where you need to be moving. Uh, but yeah, let's see. What else do we got here? Remove Curse is great. Uh, I wish there were a few more enemies that actually cast curses on players so I could use it more. Uh, but as a person who plays all the classes and plays a lot of healer, uh, I, I press those buttons. <laughs> uh, same with spell steal. Great stuff. There's uh, some enemies in the game where they they have a buff on them that has stacks. Where if you spell steal it, uh, it removes all their stacks, but you only get one stack of it. So it's uh, kind of weird in those cases. Uh, I wish it functioned a little bit differently, but uh, but overall, very nice and useful. Uh, let's see, ice block is pretty good. I find it weird that uh, to some extent, the frost mage has the worst ice block. Uh, when you're when you're looking at it from a PvP perspective, uh, if you're casting Frostbolt in PvP, and then you get interrupted, uh, you are locked out of Frost for like three seconds or whatever it is, which means you uh, the Frost Mage cannot Ice Block during that time, so it's like. It sort of leaves them very vulnerable. So I feel like the Frost Mage sh should be given a better Ice Block, or the other classes shouldn't have Ice Block. The other Mage Specs, I should say. Um, and then a similar thing I would say with the Alter Time. Alter Time is new, uh, where you press a button, it it like saves your health and after the 10 seconds or if you press the button again it teleports you back and it resets your health to what it was when you started so that's great in pvp obviously but there's also uh like times in pve where you're like oh shit i'm about to take a bunch of damage you can use that and then get all your health back uh, afterwards. Uh, so Alter Time is such a good ability. Um, uh, let's see what else do we got. Counter spell is fine. The 24 second cooldown kind of sucks, but it does prevent them from casting for six seconds. Uh, whereas shorter cooldown interrupts are only like three seconds. So if you use it at the right time 
and you you don't accidentally use it when somebody else in your group is using the interrupt. Uh, it it can be pretty good. Um, so you use it like on a monster that's casting a heal spell or whatever. Uh, certain certain enemies, but it's probably I don't know. I, I think I'd prefer it to be a shorter cooldown. Uh, like the shaman one is really short, is like twelve seconds. So on my shaman, I'm I'm like spamming count the. I think they call it a wind shear. Um, so that that interrupt stuff is uh, all right. Uh, the mirror image is. I have no idea why it works this way, but use mirror image and uh, all your mirror images, they cast Frostbolt, um, which uh, does not make sense to me. Obviously I have the Frostbolt spell, but... It's like not convincing as far as a PvP situation goes. For PvE, it's okay if like monsters are coming at you. Uh, your your mirror images will kind of take some aggro. I liked it better though when the mirror images did more damage. Um, the the current iteration, the mirror images do such little damage do I have that in here does it tell me yeah so during all that time the uh, mirror images only did 2.3 K damage so it's a very very weak um, so yeah that's I think the mirror image should really get buffed uh, also, it feels like it should be more of an arcane, uh, arcane mage type of thing. I feel like arcane mage should have like a better version of mirror image than, uh, the other specs. Uh, similar to how I think, uh, frost mage should have a better ice block and Probably like a better Frost Nova. They they sort of do have a better Frost Nova, but I don't think it's that much better. It's more like the synergy with the uh, the other stuff. So yeah, there's issues with it. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to see Mirror Image better. Greater invisibility is awesome. The other specs have like a invisibility where it like. Your character fades out over three seconds or something. Uh, and greater invisibility is uh, instant. And it's got a shorter cooldown, if I recall correctly. Uh, so, more for, for, for PvE, you, you're not really using it a lot. But if you're... If you like just started a pull and your tank doesn't fully have aggro and you get aggro, it could be like a good emergency button uh, to get the aggro off of you. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, as a as an idea, uh, even though it's not terribly useful in PVE, uh, I think it's a great ability to have. So I'm really glad we got that. Um, anything else? Low fall is just kind of there. I think that's about all the abilities. Uh, yeah, we can talk about talents and borrowed power stuff next, but let me actually queue for that dungeon. So... We're going to do everything except the Arden Wield ones because 
the Arden Wield, there's a uh, calling thing currently where you can complete it by doing a dungeon, but uh, but that means uh, a lot of overgeared people will queue for it um, instead of doing the uh, four world quests or whatever. I think I already did it. Yeah, so I already did it, but uh, but basically, I want to try to avoid a group that's gonna have a bunch of overgeared people in it, and I'm also going to take off some gear here because I am currently a little overgeared for a heroic. I've got full heroic stuff plus uh. Four pieces of mythic zero gear. Uh, like I said earlier, my trinkets aren't ideal, but basically I'm overgeared for uh, heroics at this point. Heroic required item level to queue for it is 185. Uh, it gives you 249 gear. Uh, the normal dungeons give you 236 gear. Uh, so. It's, it's kind of weird. Uh, I think they shouldn't have uh, done heroic till like 230 item level or something. Because uh, you can... Yeah. Maybe like 225. Uh, but yeah. We are... Uh, I'm gonna go in there with 204 item level. It's kind of, kind of in the middle. You can definitely, just from doing normal dungeons, like I said, you can get 236 gear out of it. Um, but uh, there's not really any point of maxing out on normal dungeon gear. Basically, you want to go to heroic dungeons as soon as possible. So, yeah, we'll keep it at a, a reasonable item level so that I'm not uh, destroying the damage meters compared to regular players. Uh, but there's still the possibility of us getting some overgeared people in the party. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen because I want to just give a video of a realistic look at the strengths and weaknesses of the uh, Arcane Mage spec. So, if we're like killing everything too quickly, uh, then I don't run into those problems of running out of mana and it, the video becomes kind of pointless. So, uh, like I said, I would definitely prefer to do it in a mythic dungeon which I'm more appropriately geared for and uh, people won't high over geared people aren't really going to join a mythic zero dungeon so it it definitely make more sense to do that but yeah uh, if you try to go to pre-made groups which they don't really have a proper thing to find mythic zero but if you do mythic parentheses then it doesn't it doesn't include the mythic plus keystone or whatever um then you could definitely try to look through groups in here but it's just as a dps uh it it can take a while to find a group it really 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 fucking sucks but that'll be for another video I'll rant about this more in another video uh, but yeah we're queued for a heroic dungeon let's talk about the other things I wanted to talk about while we wait one is talents so I talked a bit about specific talents already when I was talking about seal target and AOE DPS 
Um, but let's go through all of them. Clear cast arcane missiles, fire two additional missiles. This is probably my favorite talent out of all the talents. Um, because just having a one extra missile, three mana cost, uh, arcane missiles doesn't feel nearly as good as being able to do this. It's like I said earlier, eight missiles compared to five missiles. It's a uh, a really uh, big difference. Uh, so I love this talent. I wouldn't mind if they made it like baseline to just have uh, clear cast arcane missiles be better. Because, uh, yeah, the, fr the free mana cost part of clear cast is important, but it doesn't feel nearly as good as the extra damage coming out. Now, rule of threes is a strange one. So, when you gain your third arcane charge, the cost of your next arcane blast or arcane missiles is reduced by 100%. Um, so, like I said earlier... Whoops. Let me actually pick the town. Oh, shit. Our Q popped. I guess we're doing the dungeon now. And, yeah. We might have some overgeared people. Usually it's the healer and the tank that are overgeared because the Q pops up with them being, uh, uh, they get like the bonus from being a in demand spec or whatever. In this case, we have a rogue who's super overgeared and pulling things over here, but took out the gear right yeah but yeah so we're gonna just spam our arcane explosions and shit I don't have the actual talent that I want now oh well so I don't have my extra two casts on my arcane missiles clear casts so that sucks. But we have rule of threes. So we do get the... Uh, the volume is kind of loud on my headphones. I didn't turn it out here. Alright, so... Yeah, we got a rule of threes, but what it gives us is an arcane blast, which is our single target one, or arcane missiles for free. It's not clear cast arcane missiles, so it doesn't give us the extra missiles. Um, but the problem I have with this talent is that because those are both single target spells, in these AoE situations, uh, you're not really going to want to use those very much. But that also is a problem because to, to get a lot of use out of this talent, you have to... Uh, I'm not terribly good at talking and playing at the same time. Whoops. Oh, my interrupts on cooldown still. Oh, our tank's dead. That's a problem. Alright. 
Back to what I was saying. Alright, so for rule of threes... The, uh... The situation we're going to get to that third charge frequently is AoE when you're spamming Arcane Explosion and Arcane Barrage. So single target spells, you... You know, I think I'll just... I'll just talk about the talents after the dungeon. Let's just focus on doing damage. I haven't been pressing my rune of power and stuff. Because like I said, I'm usually too lazy. Which is why I usually use the... Uh, what was that called? Encanter's Flow? So, I should use it like here. And then... Go. Damage, damage, damage! And we're down to two targets, so not too useful to use Arcane Explosion anymore. Although, with uh, without my proper clear cast Arcane Missiles thing. Uh, those aren't as good as I'd like them to be. We'll steal that. My interrupt was on cooldown. Normally I just interrupt it, but we can steal it. Reduces physical damage taken by a lot, but I'm not currently taking physical damage, so it doesn't really matter. This rogue is doing way too much damage. We'll do our instant cast arcane arcane blast. That's what it's called. Instant cast arcane blast. Uh, ah, shit. Is that gonna end? Holy shit! Uh, can I get out of that? Yeah. too fast. This one becomes alive. Not quite quick enough. Let us begin. Uh, oh, damn it. Wasted my rune of power there. This is a... Alright. I'm totally not playing this right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this uh, Mirrors of Torment thing is... Without the talent for extra clear cast arcane missiles, it's not nearly as good. Um, so, yeah. This is turning out to be like a terrible example. <laughs> I want to interrupt whoever's farthest so that we can group them up. And AoE them down. How dare you interrupt my research? Alright. Do this. We're just gonna ignore this mechanic. Basically, just because they're heroic, though. Uh, we can use our time warp thing also. Well, it didn't even do that much damage, anyways. Whoops, I forgot to cancel it. So much left to discover. So yeah. Quickly, mortals. Escape with Sarai. That rogue who has so, was as much health as I currently have. You seek. It will never leave this prison. None have ever escaped the sanguine we'll death. Let the tank grab that. And so many wants it. So yeah, rogue's doing too much damage. Look at that shit. This guy's melted. Do a rune here, I guess. Our dude survives. But I might get aggro if he doesn't. made it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was even going to cast it. Uh, to use our thing to get our stacks back up since all the enemies were dead. Uh, whoops. That sucked. Thought I had a clear cast up. So I wasted a bunch of mana. Uh, so I used a mana gem there. That would have been a proper time to use a mana gem if our allies weren't killing these so quickly. Uh, this, we ran out of mana. Uh, and there were guys to kill. If there weren't guys to kill, then evocation would have been the play. Like, now would be a decent time for evocation. Uh, 
Uh, we'll use this to get our stacks up. Everything is dead, and we only have one charge. And I guess we're gonna time warp here. We better use our damage button. And this boss is gonna die really fast. Through no fault of my own. Guess I have enough time for a rune of power. So, yeah, because of the rogue doing too fucking much damage, uh, forgot to reset the damage beforehand for overall data, so hopefully that's accurate. Um, ones. That might be accurate. Otherwise, this might... Does this include the uh, the test dummy is what I'm trying to figure out. I don't see a test dummy in here. Maybe I'm blind, but I think this is accurate. So yeah. Rogue did too much damage. I got a sword. I don't think there is a use sword, but uh, I already have that item, so I don't need it. Anyways, yeah. So, on the trash, like I said, lots of arcane explosion spam. Uh, with Arcane Barrage when you get the full charges up. And for single target, uh, using Touch of the Magi to get your charges up initially, and then Arcane Blast and clear cast Arcane Missiles when necessary. Uh, but let's get back to talking about talents. So, talents, uh, like I said, Clear cast arcane missiles feels like the best talent to me. Um, I mean, like out of all the talents, my favorite one. Um, rule of threes. Uh, so when you're when you gain your third arcane charge, the cost of your next arcane blast or arcane missiles, which are single target damage, is reduced by hundred percent. So it sounds uh just reading it it sounds useful but the problem is uh you're not really using arcane barrage much in single target situations to reset your charges uh because your initial arcane blasts are just so fucking slow and so the it's just not desirable um, so that, uh, so that situation comes up more in AOE situations where you're spamming arcane explosions and arcane, uh, barrages, but, uh, whoops, we gotta switch back to the talent. So like at this point I have a free arcane blast or arcane missiles, but uh the damage of that is uh not nearly as useful as from a uh just another arcane explosion. Um so, like, when it, when it's time to do AoE damage, 
you don't really want to cast that single target damage spell. Uh, unless, like I said earlier, you're using the this talent, and then you have the, uh, the clear cast arcane missiles. Uh, but otherwise, a free non-clear cast arcane missiles isn't very good. And a free arcane blast isn't very good. Uh, so you get the free arcane blast. You, you get it at three charges. If you're going to use it on arcane blast, you don't want to use it until you have all four charges because that's when you get the most value out of it. So, uh, so yeah, you're looking at 3,800 damage instead of 3,400 damage. So you, you have it here, but you want to still use your arcane explosion. Uh, for that and then you could use it there, but overall I feel like this talent is garbage Arcane familiar is also garbage Um, Sort of The uh, the damage of it is pathetic So you have uh, You're you're here like casting your spells or whatever let me let me go to current segment reset. Oh, yeah. I really wanted to actually look at the damage breakdown of the overall damage, uh, but I've screwed it up now on these target dummies. So, uh, it's a it's a bit off from what it should be. I think I did more arcane explosions and arcane barrages here than anything else. Not much on arcane blast and arcane missiles. Uh, it's not too far from what it should be. Basically, lots of arcane explosion and arcane barrage and arcane blast and some arcane missiles. Uh, specifically, uh, if you're using the, the proper talent, which I wasn't. Then only when it's a clear cast arcane missiles, basically. And those will be like 95% of your damage. Uh, yeah. Things, yeah. Things did not go as planned. But, uh, yeah. So arcane familiar's damage, if we go back to current segment here. It's not considered a pet when it comes to the damage meter here. It shows up as Arcane Assault. So you see it, it, it does like 200 something damage every five seconds or something. I'm, I'm exaggerating the five seconds part. It's like two or th every two or three seconds, but it's like very, very low single target DPS. So, uh, yeah, less than 200 damage. Very weak. Uh, what it does give you is maximum mana. So, in that respect, it's not ultra terrible. It's not as bad as ru Rule of Threes. Rule of Threes is practically useless, in my opinion. Um, but it, it's... I'd still consider amplification better. Amplification. Uh, yeah. The clear cast arcane missiles is uh, extra extra ones. Two extra missiles is like uh, uh, it's like two thousand extra damage per cast or something. It's uh, pretty good. Uh, so let's look at the next row. This row is very interesting. I find Slipstream to be the most useful. Uh, clear casting allows arcane missiles to be channeled while moving. This is, uh, very useful in the, all those situations where you want to cast while moving to avoid some kind of mechanic. 
uh, like that, and then you need to dodge the other way. Um, so, like I said earlier, you can use Presence of Mind to give yourself a few instant cast arcane blasts to uh, cast while moving. And of course, you could do a little fire blast to cast while moving. Uh, and then... Uh, that's single target situation stuff. Where it's really the, the boss mechanics that you gotta move for type of thing. Uh, for AoE, you can, of course, move while casting like, Arcane Explosions uh, and Arcane Barrages, so it doesn't really matter there. Uh, you might stand still if you're lazy or if you want to do the Rune of Power thing for AoE damage, then, of course, you need to be in that spot for it to uh, do anything for you. But, but overall, casting while moving is more helpful in the uh, si uh, single target boss damage situations. But also, evocation can be cast while moving. It's just really important in that you don't want to start casting evocation and then you suddenly have to move uh, because then you'll only get like half your mana back instead of all your mana back so I feel like that's practically mandatory uh, otherwise you'll get hit by some big boss mechanic and some of them will kill you if you get hit by them so you, you really have to cancel them or you like ice block at the last second if you can't make it out of them Stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. I find Slipstream very helpful. Uh, Shimmer, since it's castable while casting, you can use it... Uh, you can use it to move out of a mechanic like that. Um, so you can use it similarly. Um... So it's still pretty good. Uh, Master of Time lets you alter time more and also blink more. So that's super, super useful also. Um, but, uh, but then you got to be a lot more careful about when you're using your evocations and uh, your clearcast arcane missiles. Uh, cause, yeah, your clearcast arcane missiles, if you suddenly have to move, um, you, you lose so much damage if you have to cancel your clearcast arcane missiles. Um, let's see, rune of, so the next row of talents, rune of power, encanter's flow, focus magic. Uh, focus magic is a it only works in groups so it's kind of weird you you will literally never use this for solo content type stuff um if you're like a lazy person who never changes the talents then uh you'll want to use one of these other ones runa power is a lot of damage uh, but, but yeah, if you have to move, it's a problem. So, okay, I cast in the, uh, the name Executioner Torvald or something like that. Uh, Executor Torvald. Yeah. During that fight, I put the Rune of Power on the ground. And then my ally was standing next to me when he was targeted with the AoE thing from the boss. Then I blinked away from that. Um, I was just... It's just heroic because... Uh, it was just heroic, so it, it wasn't really necessary for me to blink out of it. But just as good practice... Uh... Like, 
you really want to minimize your damage taken so you don't want to sit in stuff like that um otherwise it's like more burden on the healer and uh generally less chance of the group being successful so yeah Uh, let's see here. Um, so yeah, Rune of Power can be really great uh, when you use it at the right time. If you use it at the wrong time, uh, then you have to sort of abandon it or get hit by something you don't want to get hit by. That type of thing. So, uh, Encanter's Flow just goes like up and down. For, uh, how much extra damage you're doing it goes from 4% to 20% so it's uh, when I don't want to deal with runa power that's what I use uh, and it's just solid uh, next row of talents resonance resonance Arcane Barrage deals more ta damage per target it hits. Uh, like I said, and I keep saying, uh, I don't really use Arcane Barrage much in single, star single target situations because of how the first couple casts of Arcane Blast are useless. So because of that, um, if, you do, if you do use Arcane Barrage in a single target situation, like this, uh, you don't want to cast the, the first couple arcane blasts like that. So, if you have, you can use presence of mind to uh, help mitigate that problem, or you can use arcane barrage when you have uh, touch of the magi up, so that you can uh, recover your stacks, and that's a reasonable. Uh, a reasonable play. So that's basically the only r reasons you would use Arcane Barrage in single target situations outside of if you run out of mana, literally, and don't have a evocation or a, like mana gem to replenish. Um. So yeah. So I love that talent because you, you get a lot of use out of it for uh, spamming the trash mobs in the dungeon. Uh, Arcane Echo is also an AoE thing. It buffs your freaking Touch of the Magi crap, which is... Like I said, I don't really like Touch of the Magi. Uh, it doesn't really makes sense to me to use uh because really what you want to use it for is when you have uh the cl the uh clear cast arcane missiles stacks up so here we go we're at three now if we use uh touch of the magi now and then we uh, use our arcane missiles, and we'll use another arcane blast in there. And I threw in a fire blast at the end because I was able to. Uh, then we get some amount of damage out of Touch of the Magi. But like I said, it's not really... Uh, it's not really great compared to just spamming arcane explosion arcane barrage um, but this talent this talent makes it better but but it is I'll just read it direct damage to sorry direct damage you deal to enemies affected by touch of the magi causes an explosion that deals arcane damage to all nearby enemies uh, deals reduced damage beyond eight targets so uh, so when you have touch of the magi 
every time you do single target damage, it does a small AoE. Now this AoE is only like a quarter as good as a Arcane Explosion. So with Arcane Blast, it's still garbage. Uh, but when you have the clear cast Arcane Missiles, then you're doing a lot more uh, I got zero <laughs> clear cast stacks there. I'm trying to get my clear cast stacks back up. So, if you are in the situation where you have your clear cast stacks up, then you do Touch of the Magi, and then Arcane Missiles clear cast three times, and then you do your last couple things. Then it gives you a lot more damage from that talent. But the problem is that in AoE target situations, because Arcane Explosion eats clear casts, um, basically you never get your clear cast stacks up in, uh, it, it's, it's essentially impossible to get your clear cast stacks up, uh, using the regular AOE rotation. Um, so you never really run into that situation, which makes this a good talent so uh so yeah i i think that talent is uh it, it, it isn't good enough to make touch of the magi actually worth using for uh aoe situations the only real situation you could get it in is if you're in a boss fight and the boss summons adds uh then you might be in a situation where you've been casting arcane blast at the boss and you happen to have clear cast stacks up at the right time i said you happen to have clear cast stacks up at the right time All right, we only got two clear cast stacks, but say now the boss spawns adds, then we use Touch of the Magi, use our Arcane Missiles, and then we can get some value out of it like that. But that's, uh, that's only when you happen to have been saving up clear casts. For uh, for that exact situation, or that certain type of boss fight that spawns adds, the dungeon we just did. This boss spawns zero adds. This boss spawns one ad occasionally. This boss spawns zero adds. This boss spawns zero adds. Unless you call, unless you count the hallways part. But at that part, you're just uh, you're just AOEing anyways. So you. In general, uh, this talent has very limited use. I wouldn't use it. Uh, another Tempest. I don't understand. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I haven't really tried this. Doesn't seem like it'd be that great. But I haven't really looked at the numbers, so I don't know what number did I put it on? Uh, six. So it does some AoE, like 400 damage over 12 seconds. It's fluctuating because of my Encander slow shit. Um, so. I don't know, it's, it seems really weak to me. 400 damage over 12 seconds. Um, yeah. Because a single arcane explosion does like 1500 damage, so... I don't 
I don't know when this would actually be good. Um, the, my bad, the 400 damage is, uh, before the damage in increased by arcane charge, so. 73% per arcane charge, that'll come out to roughly 150% increased damage, so 400 times 2.5 is 1,000 damage, so 1,000 damage over 12 seconds. So... It's uh, more mana efficient than Arcane Explosion. Doesn't generate an Arcane Charge. Um, and you can only have one at a time. So I'm casting it on one guy, but if I cast it on another one, it removes the first one, I think, theoretically. So, yeah, I don't know, doesn't seem that good to me. Maybe the math works out, it's alright, i definitely just stick with Residence. Alright, next row talents, uh, these talents are all kind of not very useful as far as PvP, or PvE goes, PvP they're more useful, uh, but I'm not here to talk about PvP, I'm talking about PvE. So, uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, we're, we're talking primarily dungeon stuff. So there's solo content stuff, which uh, doesn't really matter that much, but like I said, as far as the solo player is concerned, the... Uh, the the slow first couple casts of Arcane Blast just feel really bad. Uh, but once you get your charges up and you kill an enemy, then you move on to the next enemy. You'll usually still have your charges up, so it's not that big of a deal. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Dungeons is like the, the group content that is the most accessible to people. Um, and basically you can't do LFR pretty much without doing dungeons because your item level will be too low, uh, to even queue for LFR if you don't do dungeons. So you pretty much have to do dungeons, uh, and raid content is just not... It, it, it's, uh, very single target focused in most cases and avoiding mechanics um so very different structure than dungeons uh sometimes they're really bad for arcane mage sometimes you uh like run out of you if you, you have if you have too much dps uptime you run out of mana early on in the fight and then you look useless basically uh, basically, you, you are useless <laughs> after, like, the first, uh, minute and a half or so of a raid boss fight, which lasts, like, five minutes. So, those, those can be really bad, but if it's a boss where, uh, you have to do a lot more, like, movement to avoiding stuff, then your mana regenerates during those times, so. so some raid boss fights are alright, some are really bad for Arcane Mage but we're, we're mostly concerned with dungeons, and for dungeons uh, these talents are all not very useful you could use Ring of Frost to free some adds if you wanted to, or to uh Or if somebody accidentally pulled another pack uh, that you didn't want to pull, then you could bring a frost to uh, possibly save the group. But it only lasts like 10 seconds, so not too useful. 
uh, an extra charge of Frost Nova. Similarly, because the Frost Nova breaks on damage, uh, and you're usually just trying to damage everything, uh, it's more like a oh shit button type of thing. So, uh, as long as things are going well, generally not too useful. And Chrono Shift, uh, Arcane Barrage slows enemies by 50% is, uh, in dungeons not too useful usually. Uh, could be useful if your tank's trying to kite enemies. Uh, but, uh, the movement speed that you get out of it, uh... So we got this increased movement speed for a few seconds. That is, uh, that's why I choose that talent. Uh, just the faster that you can, uh, move around to avoid, uh, mechanics or to, uh, just move to the next trash pack, the, uh, the better. Uh, sometimes, uh, it, a lot of the times you won't have enough time in between fights, particularly Mythic Plus. You're trying to move on to the next pack as quickly as possible. You won't have time to eat and or drink to recover your mana in between. But if the healer's got to recover mana, then you definitely want to... Do that as much as possible. I should have been mentioning that earlier, but... Uh, yeah. In a heroic dungeon, it doesn't really happen. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Those talents are all kind of weak for dungeons. I don't particularly like any of them. Um... I also don't really like how both of these are like frost focused. I'd rather there be more of a. I I, I don't like having uh, extra frost crap. I like being more of a pure arcane mage type of thing. All right, reverberate. If arcane explosion hits at least three targets, it has a fifty percent chance to gain an extra arcane charge. I mentioned this earlier for AOE rotation uh, gets you to your arcane barrages more often which is more DPS for AOE it's great I love it arcane orb like I said it shoots too damn far uh, I took it off the bar I think it shoots too damn far uh, so it's very easy to uh, aggro another pack of enemies that you didn't want to. Um, and then Supernova, the damage, it, it like knocks enemies upwards, not like a shitload, just like, like a jump height or something. It's, it's sort of this weird AOE interrupt type of thing. Uh, it's... Really, I don't like how they're putting it on a talent tier that it competes directly with damage. Now, with the Dragonflight new talent system, uh, uh, I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, I'm just waiting for it to come out in the pre-patch. So, we'll see. Uh, but basically, the, the design of putting this against... AoE damage abilities doesn't make sense to me. It would make more sense, like, in the row above it, basically. Something has a more of a oh shit utility type of thing. Um. Alright. Uh, last row talents. Overpowered. Uh, nice and reliable. As long as you press your arcane power button. Um, otherwise, you're going with arcane anomaly, which is really weird. Uh, 
you randomly get these buffs uh I was looking at it the other day. I don't remember exactly how often they come up. Cause I I looked in the the details and saw that it got triggered some thirteen times out of some number of minutes, but I don't remember what it actually worked out to. Uh but the problem is for as far as dungeons goes, it feels really bad when you get uh, when you get the arcane power one or the time warp one outside of combat, or in general just the time warp one. Like I said earlier, since time warp is uh, practically useless for arcane mage. Um, the time warp one in general just kind of feels bad. So, uh, so yeah, I don't like that talent. This other one, arcane damage while you're above seventy percent mana, or mana regeneration while you're below seventy percent mana. That I haven't looked at how it works out. The 8% damage part while well above 70% mana. Uh, I don't know, 8% damage isn't a lot, so it doesn't sound too good to me. Um, and then the mana regeneration. I don't know how that actually works out as far as is it all that good or not. So. Hard to say. It'll definitely uh, keep you from running out of mana longer. Uh, but I don't know how much longer. So, uh, if I did some testing on it, maybe I'd find out it's worth it. But overpowered is the safe option. As long as you actually press the button. All right, we're done talking about talents. Thank God. We can finally move on to the last thing, borrowed power. Borrowed power being, uh, first of all, your covenant ability. Uh, so, as a Venthyr, everybody gets the Door of Shadows teleport thing. Um, but... Also, as a mage, you get the Mirrors of Torment. Uh, like I said earlier, it basically gives you three free clear casts, uh, which with this talent, you get those extra good arcane missiles. Uh, it's really great. I love it. And the problem is the the balance that Blizzard did for Shadowlands on on the Covenant powers as well as all the borrow, borrowed power systems was terrible. So this is definitely pretty good. There was a AoE one for the mage that was pretty good. Uh, at least I've seen people use it. And then I don't remember what the other two were. Uh, yeah. So you all, you saw this a lot more if you looked at uh, some of the other classes. The balance, especially, was especially bad. On the mage, I don't know really how bad it was because I already forgot what the other ones were. I just know I saw uh, mages using the uh, AOE one a lot, but maybe that's just because that one's more conspicuous. I don't know if the other ones were really that bad, but I chose this one specifically for single target damage capabilities. And... If 
the uh, arcane mages AOE or sorry if arcane mages single target damage becomes worse in dragon flight with for me with the loss of this uh, covenant ability I will be very very unhappy when I say single target damage I'm not talking about just the damage specifically but the clear cast arcane missiles being uh, free so that your mana pool lasts longer that's a very important part of it all right um so yeah without seeing the other covenant abilities again actually we well I could log into a different character and be at the part where you choose your covenant abilities within a few minutes, but I think this video is dragging on long enough. So, other bard power stuff, which is what we want to look at. Uh, we want to look at over here. The soulbind slash conduit shit. Um, so I'm just on the first conduit thing here, or the first soulbind for arcane. Uh, and so yeah, you get different types of conduits to put in here. And you also get some abilities that are not conduits. They're just, like, tied to the soul vine. So, some of these are pretty good. Uh, this is a generic one that everybody gets. Um, but your barriers heal you for 42% of the damage absorbed isn't terrible. Uh, problem is, usually, you're casting your barrier at the start of the fight with full health. Um... So, if your barrier absorbs some amount of damage, you're already at full health, so that healing doesn't do you any good. But it only really helps you mid-fight. Um, and, yeah. In a shield that absorbs 6.8% of your max health for 15 seconds after you blink... Now this is uh, similar to a talent in the fire spec, where you blink and you get your fire barrier. And uh, so I like that. Um, all inside of ice block, you heal a lot. That's uh pretty good because you're usually going to ice block when you are low on health and it's good if your healer doesn't have to heal you um such as uh like if everybody in your team's dying and your healer can't heal you so that's a a good uh a good thing to have uh but uh, you shouldn't really be ice blocking too much in dungeons, so, uh, if ever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's why, uh, that's why I don't have it slotted. Uh, cooldown of blink is reduced. I like that. We're talking, like, game design type of stuff, of course. Um... But also like balance type of things. So some things I uh, when I say I like it, I like it as a like an idea of how it works type of thing. Um. So yeah, reducing blink cooldown is great. Uh, it'd be nice if that was like a. We're talking about things that. So we're, we're talking about borrowed power here. So if we look at. Uh, all this stuff, it's all going away. 
for Dragonflight, right? So if it's all going away in Dragonflight, then we have to say, okay, what stuff did we like and what stuff did we not like? The, the idea is we want Dragonflight to be fun, right? So we want some of the stuff to come back again. Sort of like some of the stuff from Battle for Azeroth showed up in Shadowlands. Uh, some of like stuff that was like borrowed power in BFA showed up in in here or in the legendaries or in the talent tree or things uh, showed up uh, even as like base spec type of stuff. So, yeah, I should have talked about that when we started this borrowed power section, but that's that's sort of the, the big idea is what do we like? What do we not like? What is, uh, what are we worried that Dragonflight is going to be taken away from us? So, yeah. The cooldown blinks good. Interrupting, successfully interrupting, reducing, reduces its cooldown. Um, I'd rather just, they reduce the cooldown. Um, yeah. Um, because if you unsuccessfully interrupt then it feels like you're getting double penalized uh, so I, th I think it's better to just have a thing that reduces the cooldown of counter spell instead of successfully interrupting uh, let's see your invisibility increases your movement speed by 25% for 6 seconds. Um, I don't like this very much. That's not a lot of movement speed. Uh, we could put it on here real quick. So... I thought it said 29%. I thought it said 25%. Anyways, it's not a lot of movement speed. Uh, in, like, the big picture, like, it's lower than a Shaman and Ghost Wolf, for example. So, the... Uh, I, I, I'm thinking it's a, like a, a PvP type of idea where you want to get away from the point that you disappeared from and in that case it's not going to get you away from that point fast enough. I'd much rather have it be something like you can blink while in greater invisibility. Something like that. Um... As far as PvE goes, this uh, seems pretty useless. I mean, if there's like a boss mechanic and your blink cooldown's down or something, you could theoretically greater invisibility to try to run away from it. Um, but you take reduced damage for three seconds after disappearing anyways. So even if it's like a big boss mechanic hit, um, you can relatively tank it with greater invisibility. So, I don't know. It, it seems... Seems not too useful to me. Uh, cooldown on Ice Block reduced by 35 seconds. Ice block is a four minute cooldown, so reducing it by 35 seconds is probably good in PvP. 
except uh, I don't think our K-Mage is very good in PvP. I tried a... What do they call it again? Solo Shuffle? Yeah, a Solo Shuffle earlier. And let me put my gear back on here. So I tried a Solo Shuffle earlier. I'm currently 53,000 health. It, uh, they have some kind of PvP scaling where it put me up to 70,000 health. The problem is, well, I don't, I don't have like any PvP trinkets. Uh, and I haven't messed with the PvP talents, so. I probably have stuff here that's whoops why am I put my talents back to what the ones I like um so yeah the uh so yeah I didn't have this available I guess these other ones were working but I didn't have this on my bar and I wasn't using it so uh, so basically it was me with 70,000 health and not very well prepared for PvP compared to everybody else was at 100,000 health um so a very rough time I died five out of the six times so the uh and, until they get proper pvp scaling back in i don't think i'm gonna pvp anymore like ever um just because it's such a bad experience for somebody who doesn't have uh competitive gear so yeah Let's see. Back to borrowed power. We went on a whole tangent about PvP there. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we did that. All right, this one makes you do more damage when you use your freaking uh, covenant power. So I like that. Ah, uh, good for the boss fight stuff. I don't really use the Covenant Power thing outside of boss fights. Uh, it's a one and a half minute cooldown, so... You could generally use it once or twice between each boss, probably. Uh, for most dungeons. Varies depending on the dungeon, of course. For example, the one we just did, Executor Tarvald. Uh, the second boss is so close to the third boss that uh sometimes you're killing the third boss before the cooldowns that used on the second boss are even up so it, it definitely varies but uh but yeah i generally just use it on the uh the boss fights so i'm not sure if it's actually worth using uh but it's kind of silly to talk about a passive buff to a thing that's already a borrowed power mechanic let's look at it, things that are actually not that 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 are passives that are related to things that are inherent to the class so each wave of clear cast arcane missiles reduces the cooldown of arcane power by 0.45 seconds so obviously because it's each wave of arcane missiles uh, when you have the extra arcane missiles, it's like extra synergy uh, with this. So if we uh, we get our clear casts up and we've used our thing, then it uh, it gives our uh, gives extra cooldown reduction to our arcane power. I don't know exactly how much you're likely to get out of it, but it's also a case, uh, case the right word. It's also a, 
reason to use uh, in these situations where you have AoE when you get the clear cast from your arcane explosion it's a uh, it's an argument for using the clear casts on the arcane missiles instead of the arcane explosions so we use it here instead of just spamming more arcane explosions so that'll uh you can see it the cooldown of that is ticking down uh when we get those clear casts off so so yeah each time we do that 0.45 seconds each for uh, eight waves of arcane missiles comes out to what uh like three and a half seconds or something 3.6 seconds something like that we could calculate 0.45 times eight is yeah 3.6 seconds of uh cooldown every time you get the clear casting wave of arcane missiles so i really like that um so i hope that comes back like in the talent tree or something in dragonflight um Consuming clear casting increases the damage of your next two arcane blasts by 9%. Uh, that's... I don't know if it's very good. Um, so in single target... Uh, let's get our... Next up. So in single target, the ratio you get of clear casts to two arcane missiles isn't that great so so we got two stacks up there so you're getting what is it nine percent damage out of something that's going to be uh like in the in the total of the dungeon it's uh not very much in the total of a boss fight it's i don't know let's say you get clear casting like once every five arcane blasts or something Actually, we could do the math on it. We could do the math on it. Clear casting is... I think it's 1% chance for every 1,000 mana or something like that. No, 1% chance every 250 mana. So if this costs... 68, 75 mana divided by 250 mana... Uh, is that right? I guess. So you have a 27.5% chance for every arcane blast uh, at max charges to trigger a clear casting. So it's more than a 1 in 4 chance. Uh, but sometimes you're doing uh, the uh, arcane missiles twice in a row, uh, so it your your thing still only has two charges. Do I have one charge? That's weird. Um, so so yeah. You'd have to uh, use your clear casting one at a time and cast at least uh, two arcane blasts in between to get full value out of that. Uh, and then the other thing is, well, a lot of the times you're getting the clear casting in AOE situations where 
you might use the clear casting arcane missiles if you wanted to, but you won't. Uh, you won't likely use arcane blasts in those situations because you're gonna have to use your clear casting arcane missiles, uh, or your clear cast on the, uh, or your clear cast. You'll use it on the arcane explosion. Uh, after that. You'll go back to uh, more arcane explosions and arcane barrages. You're not going to want to cast arcane blast. So you're really going to get this. You're you're really only going to use it in those boss situations, like single target situations, and it's uh, only going to give you essentially. Best case scenario, like half your arcane blast will be buffed by 9%. Um, except for this Covenant ability. Covenant ability, since it gives you free clear casts, uh, I guess you'll get extra arcane blasts out of it. So, you might... Uh, Maybe like three quarters of your arcane blast will get benefited by it, but still, that's only for those single target situation stuff. So it's a less than ten percent damage on something that's gonna end up being like twenty percent of your damage tops, because uh, most of your damage is. Arcane Blast, uh, sorry, not Arcane Blast, Arcane uh, Explosion, Arcane Barrage, and uh, some Missiles. I don't recall if Arcane Blast comes up higher damage usually compared to Clear Casting Arcane Missiles. I feel like it does. when exactly I want to stop because it could be kind of biased as far as the results. I guess I'm out of mana. A good time to stop. But yeah. Arcane Blast, you do get more damage than Arcane Missiles. But most of your damage for a dungeon comes out as a Arcane Explosion and Arcane Barrage. So. Uh, so yeah, I think it's only like 20% of your damage for Arcane Blast. So the uh, the small increase to that damage, it does something. It'll overall give you like a few percent damage increase, but it's not a whole lot. Uh, these other ones, let's see. Your Arcane Barrage has a 5.6% chance to grant you two Arcane Charges. Um... Yeah, obviously, like I keep saying, I only really use Arcane Barrage for AoE stuff. Uh, I'm not single target. So, if it worked more often, I would consider using it single target. Because, like I said, the first couple casts of Arcane Blast are so pitiful that that's the major deterrent to using arcane barrage in single target uh so if you used arcane barrage and it gave you two charges that'd be sick but since it's only a 5.6 percent chance it just sounds really bad to me um so It'll, it'll get you your next Arcane Barrage faster. Like I said about uh, the Arcane Explosion talent for getting 50% chance to get an extra charge. But the... Um, yeah, the, the chance of 5.6% 
is just so ridiculously low. It would have to be... It'd have to be like... I want to say... Mm, 20% or something maybe for me to actually take this. Uh, and our last borrowed power thing for the conduit is Touch of the Magi accumulates an additional 8.4% of the damage you deal. So by default it's 25%, so 8.4% brings it up to 33.4% of the damage you deal. Um, in other words, it's about 25% more damage than it did before. Um, so, uh, if we looked at our Touch of the Magi damage before, uh, let's see. Like I was saying earlier, unless you have that very specific situation where you're doing single target damage on a boss and then he spawns adds, and you have clear casting already set up, uh, then maybe you'd have clear casting, uh, during here, but otherwise, you're not getting a ton of damage off the of touch of the Magi. Um, so I don't think it's, I don't think increasing Touch of the Magi's damage by 25% is, uh, it's not enough to make me want to use it. But like I said, or maybe I didn't say, I haven't looked at the exact numbers of exactly how much damage you would do. Comparing Arcane Explosion and Arcane Barrage Spam to using Touch of the Magi. But it, it doesn't seem like it's very good to me. Maybe it's alright. But it seems like they should just buff Touch of the Magi. Uh, instead of having this conduit thing. Uh, so yeah. But, but yeah. Like I said before all that was I don't I don't even like the idea of Touch of the Magi so uh uh yeah let's see that's almost everything we just got one well we we got the soul bind system thing with all these built-in uh, things to the soulbind as opposed to the conduits the the fixed ones which you can't change so uh, some of these are definitely better than others for certain specs I don't know if this one might be kind of bad for this spec because it gives you a haste buff essentially uh, whereas this one gives you a mastery buff so this this soul bind is probably better actually for the arcane mage, but the uh, but I don't I don't feel like it's my job per se to min max to that degree. I feel like it's the developer's job to balance. Um, instead of there being, like, the right decision and the wrong decision of what, uh, what covenant power you have, uh, what covenant you choose because of the covenant powers and because of the soulbind stuff. So, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to stress about those things. It's, it's really the developer's job fucking balance the game so that there isn't the right decision and the wrong decision which is also why we're trying to 
we really want haste to not be such a bad stat for arcane mage. Uh, and yeah, there's there's definitely other classes that have similar problems. Uh, some of them, not so much where a certain stat is really bad per se, uh, but more that uh, one stat is significantly better than the others because of a way it works with the care the class's mechanics. Uh, like uh, I don't th I don't recall if it still works this way, but the Shadow Priest had a thing where crit was really good. Uh, Fire Mage crits really good. Stuff like that. Just because of how crit works with the class mechanics. Um, essentially, they get more out of crit than just the upfront damage of their abilities. Um, oh yeah, so anyways, finishing off talking about Bowered Power, we have Legendaries. Or, I don't have legendaries. Uh, I could buy a legendary. They are relatively cheap right now, but that's just because they're not going to work for very much longer. Um, legendaries, this expansion, were a crafted thing, which were extremely expensive. Um, so, early on in the expansion, it was... Something like a hundred thousand gold to uh hundred thousand gold to uh, get a legendary basically. Uh so um I don't know how much that changed over the course of this expansion. Um because I stopped playing like a month into the start of Shadowlands. But, uh, but yeah, legendaries are relatively cheap, but it's still thousands of gold. I don't think it's worth to get it at this point. So, uh, we'll look at what the legendary powers actually do, though, for, so we can say what looks good. And what doesn't look good, and again, the whole point of this is what do we want to see more of in uh, Dragonflight and things that we don't want to see, things we want improved. All right, so for Arcane Mage, you can get each time Arcane Missiles hits an enemy, the damage of your next Arcane Barrage is increased by 8%. This stacks up to 18 times. So this is another case of... Uh, since Arcane Barrage, like I keep saying, I basically never use it single target, only AoE. But you're using... You have to use arcane missiles to get this benefit. Um, so, if you use it like that, um, in your if you use your clear casting on the arcane missiles for AOE, then uh, we had an eight wave there, so it increases damage by eight percent. So that would be a 64% increase to that damage of that Arcane Barrage. That's awesome. Um, now when you're spamming Arcane Explosions, you'll get a clear cast sometimes. Other times, you won't get a clear cast. So obviously it's not going to be on every Arcane Barrage, but you'll get it sometimes. And that's good enough for me. Uh, I don't know how long this buff lasts. So, I don't know if you're doing single target, like on a boss or something, 
and then you kill the boss, and then I don't know if on the next trash pack you'll have all those stacks up. In which case you could potentially have it's my hotkey. The full 18 stacks. Uh what's 18 times 8%? 18 times 8. So your thing would do 2.44 times damage uh, for your Arcane Barrage. Um, so it, it would definitely be a big chunk of damage on your first Arcane Barrage after a boss fight if it lasts long enough for that. Um, or you could, it, it might be enough that you actually use uh, Arcane Barrage during single, during the boss fight. Um, but you really want to have that Touch of the Magi available to get your charges back up. Or if the boss has adds around, you could uh, transition to AoE to use your Arcane Explosion to get your charges back up. So, this definitely could be good. Uh, I I really want them to do something about making our arcane barrage more usable in single target, so that that would help. Um, I don't know if it's entirely enough. Uh, like I keep saying, I I the the, the, the slow cast speed of arcane blast. At the low charges is just so killer. I feel like it should always just have 1.4 second cast speed. Um, and its cast speed doesn't uh, change with charges. It's uh, just the mana cost and the damage. Um, then we could uh, definitely justify using Arcane Barrage more. Uh... Crossfire on Arcane spell gives you crit damage. Uh, this is uh, more of a fire mage type of thing because uh, you can have guaranteed crit. Uh, crit damage is uh, not too exciting for for anyone who doesn't have guaranteed crit. So. Uh, I don't really like that one. Uh, well, I don't know if I should really even talk about all of these. Some of them, well, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, this one buffs the Covenant power. Um, I'm assuming Clearcast reduces Mirrors of Torment's cooldown. That's awesome. I would definitely use this legendary uh, if I uh, wanted to spend money on one. Uh, just because it's uh, it's kind of a what's the right word for it? Uh, mutually beneficial or synergetic I guess synergetics probably a better way to put it uh because this gives you clear casting and then clear casting uses its cool reduces its cooldown so you'll definitely get to use mirrors of torment a lot more with that legendary uh so uh that's that's definitely a good thing um and then more clear casting more more mirrors of torment means more clear casting which means more damage and less mana used so yeah yeah i really like that one um let's see uh this is some stupid torgash shit uh da -da 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 -da. 
Just some generic shit. Nothing to do with the mage. Uh, Arcane Barrage deals an additional... Big chunk of damage, but the low health targets. Uh, this was something that was on the Azerite powers in Battle for Azeroth. And it was one of my favorite ones. I think there was also one in Battle for Azeroth. I think it was something like this, where Arcane Barrage deals more damage per target it hits. I think it was an Azerite power before. And both of those were awesome. And that's why I played Arcane Mage so much in BFA. Was that you could just spam Arcane Explosion, Arcane Barrage. And deal so much damage in dungeons. Um, but yeah, the obviously when you get to the bosses, you can't do that. So it really sucked. Um, but that was definitely something I loved about the class. And I really want to see this be more accessible for uh, Dragonflight. Uh, having it as a legendary power, it's definitely good. I don't know if I would use it over having a better single target. Because you already have really good AoE. But it's definitely good. Uh, let's see here. Evocation grants one arcane charge and gives you an intellect buff. That feels really dumb to me. I don't. I wouldn't use that. Um, I think in BFA where there was a thing like a talent or something where evocation gave you arcane charges. So. The thing is, if you are using up all your mana, uh, to, and then you need to use evocation, um, if you also, to, to get value out of that, you would also need the arcane barrage to get rid of your charges, or else the getting charges out of it doesn't help you uh but the arcane barrage gives you some mana back um so it kind of conflicts in that way with the evocation so i don't like um at the wrong one i don't really like the idea of evocation giving you any arcane charges because of that so um the the intellect buff is uh it gives you some intellect it comes out to like i don't know it's it's essentially like a six second channel or something it, it it'll be like I don't know 12 percent net intellect or 15 percent it's uh it's not a crazy amount it does last 30 seconds but I don't know it, it seems weird to me because the, the way to really get value, to maximize value out of it, is on a boss fight, you would want to have your, your big damage stuff up during that intellect buff. Which means either you use this stuff at the start of the boss fight, and then you drag out your evocation channel until a point where you can recast these again so you slow your dps so that you don't run out of mana until these are up again and then you evocate and use your big damage stuff or i don't know the the the, the way you really get value out of that just 
seems uh, kind of counterproductive, I guess. So that seems like a, a really weak legendary to me. Uh, chance to get a expanded potential. Okay. So you have a chance for your clear casting to not get used up when you clear cast. So that's pretty good. This is specifically from Arcane Blasts. So that'll be single target. Uh, I don't know what the the actual chance of that is. Because uh, you have a chance. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be... Like, I don't, I don't know what percentage of your clear casts are not going to be consumed. So, if it's like half your clear casts are not consumed, then you get... Uh... Double clear casting on half your clear cast, which would be like 50% more arcane missiles... Damage... And... Less mana consumed. I don't know. It, it could be really good. I don't know how often it gets triggered, so it's hard to say. I wouldn't... I wouldn't buy a legendary just to test it out. Uh, I would definitely pick uh, these other ones that I know more about. Unless I found, like, a... Somebody did testing on these. Uh, I guess you could... Technically, you could buy a cheap, low-level legendary to just test out the power on it um but yeah overall i don't really know if that's very good uh the idea is fine i would say i would rather it just be something more like uh you have a higher chance to uh to get clear casting like, instead of every 250 mana, it's every 200 mana is a 1% chance. Something like that. So it would be, uh, you know, like, it. I, I'd rather it tell me just, like, you, you're, you're going to get, like, 50% more clear casts or 20% more clear casts or whatever it actually works out to be. Uh, obviously, this is only from single target, so... For AoE stuff, that would, uh, it would not apply. Uh, it would not give you extra clear casting or free clear cast from that. So, I don't know. It, it seems a little too convoluted to me for what should be a simple idea of getting more clear casts. Uh, let's see. Your spells no longer break Frost Nova and enemies damage by Frost Nova to take extra damage for 8 seconds. Uh, this is... Uh, I think really just a Frost Mage thing. Because Frost Mage has, uh, I think it's called Ice Lance. Where it is a guaranteed crit against... Uh, frozen enemies, which includes uh, stuff stuck in your Frost Nova, where normally it'll break the Frost Nova from that damage, but if that doesn't break the, the Frost Nova, then you'll be doing massive single target damage with this. Um, obviously, that doesn't... Uh, that doesn't work on bosses. Like, you can't freeze bosses with Frost Nova. You'll just be immune to the freeze part of it. But because it's enemies damaged by your Frost Nova, take 15% increased damage. Uh. Oh, wait. It's from your fire and arcane spells for 8 seconds. Oh, I see what they did there. Okay. So they didn't include Frost spells on there. So that it's not super good only for, fire, for Frost Mages. Okay. So they just they still get the guaranteed crit part out of it, 
It's still really good for Frost Mages, but they don't get the 15% damage out of it. Interesting. Um, it's probably still best for Frost Mages, but I don't know. Uh, Frost Nova is a 30 second cooldown. It's it, it's definitely more damage. I don't know if it's worth it. You're going to use it in situations like this where you got guys. You're like, oh shit. Now we get 8 seconds worth of 15% extra damage. And maybe that was about 8 seconds. Um, So. I don't know. 30 second cooldown. You could use the Frost Nova Charges talent, but overall, I don't know. I don't. I don't like it outside of a Frost Mage. For Frost Mage, awesome. The 15% damage, not awesome. I mean. Not breaking from your damage is still all right. I I don't know if that means that it could break from your allies' damage though in dungeons. Because if you could just root guys for eight seconds, no matter how much damage they're taking, I'd definitely save your tank from eating a bunch of damage. Uh, they can just sit out of range of the melee enemies. So I don't know. I, I feel like your allies will still break it though, so I don't I don't think it's that good. Uh, well, you have temporal displacement. You may use temporal displacement. Is that this one? Yeah. So while you can't use that. You can still use Time Warp to get yourself 30% haste for 40 seconds. So you can give yourself... Okay. You can give yourself a Bloodlust, but not your whole party a Bloodlust while you have the debuff up. Uh, you still have a 5 minute cooldown on it. And to get the most value out of that, you need somebody else to cast the thing in the first place. So if you have if you're doing a dungeon, somebody else could cast it for you. It would be uh more usable because you wouldn't you you get to use it twice yourself. For every 10 minutes um, in addition to the other person's blood list if you have to be the one casting this then uh, then you only get this benefit once every 10 minutes uh, but it's, like I keep saying for arcane mage haste is not very useful so I definitely wouldn't use this for arcane mage uh, for uh, for like Frost Mage or Fire Mage, possibly. I haven't looked at the Frost and Fire Legendaries yet, so I don't know if they are... I don't know how this compares to those. Uh, Triune Ward, this is used in PvP, um, where you get extra benefits out of your barrier. Um, I don't know if they nerfed it at all. I don't remember when I originally saw this. I don't remember it saying each absorb shield has sixty five percent effectiveness. Uh, so maybe they nerfed it at some point. Um, but we're talking about every twenty five seconds we would get uh, about twenty four thousand damage. Uh, absorption 
that seems pretty good. Like you could use that in raids, for example, to absorb a lot of incoming damage. So, yeah, obviously it's not arcane specific. Um, I'm saying it, it seems really strong. I don't know if I really like it as a concept. Um, to just have an extra strong barrier. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Unity just... I don't know what they're... Why they did it this way, but it's a copy of this one. The Covenant ability one. Um, so, I don't know what the deal with that is. Uh, if it's something to do with the dual legendary thing that they did, where you can... You can get two legendaries, but I think one of them has to be Unity, maybe? I don't know. Uh, anyways. Uh, low chance to give you something. Oh, this is... Uh, whatchamacallit? Generic stuff. Not mage specific stuff. I don't care about any of the not mage stuff. So. Some of these could be decent, but I don't care. Oh, yeah. The Necrolord one. It turns you into this uh, skeletal mage thing where you get like super frost balls or something. I don't know. It sounded. It sounded goofy. Uh, I don't remember if I even tested it. It just sounded goofy. I saw uh, boom, clear casting, single target. For my arcane mage, and I chose this one. I get you a so yeah, uh, shifting power I think is the point blank AOE one or player based AOE, whatever you want to call it, PB AOE, where it does damage directly around you. More to our arcane explosion, but it was a standstill and channel thing. Uh. So Radiant Spark is the Kyrian one, which I don't remember what it does. So yeah, that's about it. Borrowed power. Um, some things I'd like to see some more of. Some things I don't really like, and I really hope. I think the main main things. That I really want to see in uh, Dragonflight. Uh, obviously, things are going to be different with the talent system, but I don't know how much of it is them just copy pasting these into a new talent system and how much is uh, like actually new stuff. But what I really want to see. Probably the number one thing is haste not being terrible. I mean, it's not. When I say terrible, it's not bad to have haste, but it just uh, does not benefit the arcane mage uh, as much as it nearly as much as it should because you always run into this out of mana situation um yeah and healers have a similar problem where haste is 
good until the point where you ran out of mana and then you're like, oh shit. I wish I had more crit or mastery or versatility instead. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's my number one wishlist thing, probably, is just the better stat balancing. And then number two is just uh, better uh, better options for as far as running out of mana goes because Arcane Barrage does give you mana back but then you got the slow Arcane Blasts to deal with so there's, there's so many things they could do with this uh, Uh, whether it's like a one minute cooldown on evocation, for example, would be a big difference or, uh, if they, like I said earlier, if they just got rid of the, uh, super slow initial casts of arcane blast, those would make a big difference. Uh, However they would do it. Just the whole running out of mana thing uh, really kills the arcane mage when it comes to single target damage, which is so important in, in uh, raids and uh, tyrannical dungeons. Fortified, Arcane Mage is great. You do lots of AoE damage against those tanky fortified mobs. Uh, but tyrannical, you definitely have problems with running out of mana. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I dragged this video out long enough. Not sure if anyone's ever going to watch it. But it's, uh... Yeah. I'll think about making a better format. For, uh... making things uh, I should say better communicating problems with the game because uh, I want the game to be better I'm thinking maybe I have to just make a website to just like document problems with the game because it's, uh, really too much effort to make actual short videos that are, like, concise and stuff. And, like, we, we talked about so many different things. You could, maybe I could have broken this up into, like, a bunch of different videos. But they're all very related to the arcane mage they'd all be so related to each other that it's uh i don't know i got thinking to do